Hi, I'm Jim from HyperVac Technologies, and today we're going to show you the new CubeVac vacuum system. And it's uh, pretty much the same as our Havoc system, like you see in the H1 duct truck or the trailer mounted system, except for this one's designed specifically for CubeVacs, or of course it can go in trailers like this one as well. Uh, one of the biggest differences with this system between this and the trailer is the trailer system has the filter box where the uh, bags blow at the roof of the trailer and then you get the show. Uh, with this particular system though, you've got the, um, the filter bags on a separate unit away from the vacuum itself and then the, the filter box slides out the back end of your cube down and then you hook up your, your hose and away you go and you still get the bags that blow up in the air and uh, you still get the same suction as a duck truck or an H1 trailer, it's just a little slightly different configuration. If you notice in the video the bags weren't standing straight up and that's because the bags are brand new. Uh, when the bags get a bit of dust in them they'll stand tall and you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so the cube back still uses the same 35 horsepower engines, Briggs and Stratton air-cooled system. Still has the fluid coupling inside, the two high-speed bearings. And then on the front of the vacuum, you notice uh, on the top there's a cooling fan, and that's to suck the air through and to help aid in the cooling of that air-cooled engine. And it'll automatically come on when you turn the key switch to start it. Um, inside here, there is a big battery to power everything. On the front, you've got a 10-inch inlet uh, with a very powerful steel-bladed fan. Now, parts of this component, you got steel here, and aluminum here. So where strength and, and uh, integrity is crucial, we use steel. But where it's not as important, we use aluminum, and that's for, to save weight. And uh, so you got a, a mixture of, of steel and aluminum construction. Over here, you got your filter box, and this is the part that slides out. It's sitting on a, a sliding cargo bed that you simply all you got to do to hook this up. Pretty simple. Then you just take your hose. Okay, so because the cube vac is so compact and the filter box is so compact, and when I mean compact, this is an incredibly small vacuum. When you think about the thousands of CFM it generates, when you think about, you know, this is the same suction as what a truck's pulling, so it's very, very small and tight. So because of its package, it allows you to set up your, your cube van or your trailer kind of however you want. So here we've got a compressor sitting separate. We've even got the, the exhaust piped out through the floor. And uh, it's your basic 13 horse, two stage, except for this is a 30 CFM with four pistons. And, um, and then you've got your vacuum hose on top. Uh, this one, this trailer's going out with 125 feet. So it's got 25 feet of 10 inch and then four eight inch hoses in two different weights. So th this one's a little heavier than this one. And so these are the ones you'd use closest to the vacuum and then these are the ones you use inside the house. And then normally we lay the uh, 10 inch hose down the center. Because there's so much room, we've also got two, two of our hybrid portables inside. And that's for when you can't get close enough to the job. So this particular customer is fully set up to do residential, commercial, the whole nine yards. So you can do a little bit of everything with this package. And for the cost, this whole setup is uh, probably half the cost of a, of a typical duct cleaning truck, um, including the trailer. If you go with the cube van, then that changes the pricing. But there's still lots and lots of extra room in here for shelving or whatever else you want to put in in terms of for humidifiers or filters or things like that. And this is only a 16-foot trailer. So if you go with a bigger cube van, then you'll even have more room. And then we've also got two fuel cells. These are two six gallon cells. So you, you can go days without having to, have to refuel your tank. Here we've got a third cell even. So we'll go ahead and I'll we'll start it up here and give you an idea of how the bags and filter system work. Uh, make sure you put your exhaust pipe out. And also important when it's hot, don't grab with your bare hands. So when you're done each job, make sure you put your filter bags back into the holes. It's not real complicated. And your filter bags, typically you want to shake them out if they're real dirty and try to keep them as clean as possible. And uh, you know, if you have to, even take them off and wash them periodically. Some guys will wash them once or twice a year in a laundromat washing machine. So for the front clean out drawer, pretty simple. That's where all your debris is going to go. And this thing will hold uh, easily 100, 200 pounds of dirt. So <laughs> you might not want to let it get completely full before you actually change it. 
quick and easy and away you go and put the lid or the cover back on and away you go now uh, in closing with this system we can uh, set it up for you like we've done here we can even do armor guard on the floor put on the bed liner put it all together or because the, the beauty of the system is also something you can do yourself so if you wanted we can pack all this up on a couple of skids and ship it down to you and literally it's not hard to bolt this thing in uh, 20 minutes half an hour and you can everything everything bolted in and ready to go into your own cube van and that saves you a ton of money in shipping so you don't have to worry about getting a whole trailer down but if you wanted to we can set it all up for you or uh, we can all ship ship the components down to you so it's up to you okay so maintenance on this machine is incredibly simple and with any air-cooled engine you got to do maintenance if it's gonna run for many many years without a lot of problems so and we are building this in a water-cooled version as well but uh, for the air-cooled engine, for its maintenance, basically make sure you check the oil every day. So every day, check the oil so you know that it's clean and clear. You don't need to take off this cover to check the oil. There is a hole in it. Uh, when you put oil in it, uh, you want to change your oil every 100 hours or so. And so because of that, we have a hole, hose right here that you don't actually have to let it drain there. You just take this bottom cap off the hose, undo it and it'll take about two liters of oil and let it drain out, put the cap back on, put new oil back in it. So it's quick and easy to, to do an oil change. That's really all there is to it. Uh, change the oil filter as well. If you can, which is on the other side, it might mean you have to crawl in there a little bit, but it's still fairly easy to get to. Uh, on here, you've got the two high-speed bearings. Make sure you grease those about every two weeks on average. So if you're doing, say, two to three houses a day, five days a week, Make sure you get in there and grease that, and it has to use uh, synthetic grease. We don't use regular grease, synthetic grease, and those are high-speed bearings, so you've got to use synthetic. Batteries right here, flue couplers right here. The oil inside the flue coupler uses just standard non-detergent um, hydraulic oil, and you should change that once a year. So change your oil every 100 hours in the engine, grease your bearings every two weeks, and then annually change your oil in the flue coupler. And also you should check your... Uh, air filter and blow it out with your air compressor. I would say uh, whenever you're doing your oil change, it only takes a minute. And that's it, the, the maintenance on this thing is very, very simple.